And there's that happy, but there's that balance between, you know, I love the British guys, they, say they don't call it worship, or they call it lead worship. Or, but you got to remember, worship isn't just screaming and shouting and praising God. The heart of worship is for people. So God told me a while ago, if you have a passion for something, I'll anoint you in that area. If I have a passion for healing, and I go after it, it sell all to buy that field because there's a treasure in the field. I'm going to get that treasure. It's the same concept. If you have a heart for the people you're leading, part of your worship, your worship experience, is wanting to lead them to a place of worship. So this whole, we, our mindset needs to change yeah. from true worship is me just worshiping and getting and connected with God. That is an expression of worship, but real worship isn't connected to music or praise at all. Worship's a heart issue. If that guy in the far back corner isn't entering into worship, that should affect me as a worship leader. I should be doing everything I can in my ability to grab, every time I do a song or do something, I'm reaching out and I'm trying to grab more people because the heart of it is that guy can encounter God. You understand? It's a mindset we all have to change. What worship is. We look at the stage and we're looking at if someone's really getting into it, they're really worshiping. That's not true. They're expressing praise. You understand that the mindset that we need to change? And I understand it looks better when people are getting into it praising. I'm, I'm totally for that. Absolutely. That's what we have acquired. We're just worshiping God for God. And people will follow that if you're going after God and everything. But inside, we have to have a heart for the people if we're on the team, if we're on the stage. I got a prophetic word. Uh, recently from a, a prophetic guy that's just incredible. If you guys see me moving around a lot, it's not because I have Tourette's, it's because I have a back problem. So just, I just want you to know that. I'm not, I'm not de demonized or anything, I just have a back problem. He gave me this word, he says, you're coming into a season where you're going to, you need to focus on leading the common man in worship. The common man, the guy who works 9 to 5 at, at Starbucks or, or I don't know, wherever, normal jobs that, that's not related to these at all. You need to get a heart for that person so you can lead that person to music. The truth is 90% of the church is, is that person. What can I do to grab that person to get that person to worship? That's true worship. Remember the first day I said, God is into the person sitting next to you. That's what's on God's agenda. So when we are leading worship, we have to be remembering that. So that is a good question. That's a good question to ask yourself as a worship leader. Is as I'm singing today, as I'm leading today, who am I singing to? Or if, if your song is where you're targeting worship, is your target on musicians who get your lingo? Or is someone going to be able to get and feel the Lord in what you're doing who has no musical background at all? Who has no idea? Is the single mom, is it like that thing that Joseph played? You know, are we leading worship? to incorporate every rock of life. Yeah, I've got slam and sound and our band freaking sounds like Coldplay, but how is that translating to the 98-year-old woman who's served the Lord all of her life on the back row? So we have to really be sensitive of, hey, awesome, we've got this jamming sound, we've got this amazing worship team, we're singing all the right songs, we're doing all the prophetic stuff, awesome. How is it interpreting to the 60-year-old out there? How is, we're not just doing church for the target age range of 12 to 40. And we forget that. And we have to pull it back and watch the heart and watch the content and watch the how important you know our perfect tone on our base is. It's just really, really important, really valuable. We have to really watch and take a heart into heart all these things that we've talked about today, but not lose the soul of who we are leading. And that is a broad spectrum of age and walk of life. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think on a practical level, though, without changing your style, because, you know, I, I hate the, the thing about this, like, a lot of times, some of so you might be worship leaders at churches or families where your pastor comes up and says, hey, I want you to kind of like incorporate some gospel. Or, and I like it. I think it's great. Like Lindo Cooley, he's yeah. doing that. Okay, you rock it. But let's say that's not your thing and you, and you honestly like you kind of suck at it. It'd be kind of like telling your preacher, the pastor, like, hey, like Jordan Riddle said this, hey, could you change the tone of your voice and preach like a British guy? Or you, how about you preach kind of like a black preacher? It's the same idea. But one thing across the board that we all can do to reach out to the older and the younger is this, and it's a practical thing, it's called volume. 
Now, I like it rocking and loud, but on our Sunday morning services, we come to an agreement that we're going to cap out at 89 decibels. Because we've had people leave the church. We've had a lot of complaints about because we want it to be modern and loud and booming and everything. Now, worship school is a lot louder than that because you guys are here for worship. But most of your musicians, and, you know, it's, it's a little different. Some of you are like, still too loud. But as a band and as a worship leader, what you can do and what I do all the time when I'm leading is I'm dynamics. I like it when the songs come down for a period of time. Yeah. And I'm singing a cappella or I'm singing in the spirit. So on a practical level, volume. And a lot of times when you bring a song down, the older people kind of go, We the acapella. It's like it was when I was in the Pew Church when I was five. Because songs, we're, we're connecting people with songs whether we like it or not. And we're, people are reminded of the experience they have with God's songs. So just with a practical thing like volume, it's fine to have those high, huge moments. But as a worship player, learn to take the song way down and have acapella times. In times where there's an acoustic solo or whatever you're talking about. Don't do a worship set if you're leading a whole group of people in the audience. Don't do level 15 the entire time. And we, we've done that a lot of school, but I'm just saying, like, if you're leading a group that is a different age group.